Yeah, pray. Yeah, that was great. That was great. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke. shaken together, and running over. I will put it into your bosom, for with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back unto you. So I'm using that verse, does that make you think about giving some money? Mm -hmm. All right, well, that's good. So we got two folks up here that don't. I guess the rest of us do. All right. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. There's a lot of times that when we read that, we think about giving something to somebody, then receiving something back, pressed down a lot more than we gave. Is that right? Giving something and receiving a lot more. Y'all see that in there? Yeah. All right. So we're going to look today and we're going to see just what we are giving and how generous we are right here in, in Luke chapter 6. Jesus is, we could jump in halfway in a message that Jesus is telling us what kind of principles are in the kingdom of God. And those principles that the people in the kingdom of God, the, the principles that they live out in their lives. So you're going to have to go back and read the rest of this section. Not just this one verse. Let's pray. Father, help us to die. God, to be honest with ourselves and true to your word. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, gen being generous or giving, look at, look at verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. So he's talking about, you know, giving or being generous. Or another synonym or two, liberality, free-handedness, indulgence, kindness, benevolence. These are just some of those synonyms that go along with that word give. Those are some of the, some of the words, you know, that we can relate to, that we can understand, that we can, you know, use and see if, if any of those are in our lives. Or... We can see what parts of our lives we can use those words in to say that we're pretty good with. So how generous are we in our lives? And as Jesus is teaching this, Jesus is saying there's a big difference between children of the kingdom and those children not of the kingdom. There's principles that, that we live by as believers. There's principles that we live by that unbelievers are not going to live by. And Jesus is telling us, because look up at the first part of, of this chapter in uh, verse 20, or the first part of this discourse here. In verse 20, it says, he lifted up his eyes toward his disciples. So this is what Jesus is doing. Jesus is teaching his disciples there, and he's saying, look, there's some principles that you're going to live by, and the world or the unbelieving people are not going to live by them, but they're going to know you're different. And you're going to know those who are different also by the way we act, by the way that we, we respond, by the things that we do. So Jesus talking to his disciples right now. You know, we're jumping halfway in this message, so we've got to go back and read all of it. 
But he's, he's telling his disciples this, give, be generous. Is that not one true quality that believers have as a giving attitude or a giving spirit, mm -hmm. a giving heart? Yeah. Somebody may have popped in your mind and said, well, they ain't very forgiving. Now, there may be some things, some people that we're more willing to give to than others. What about that? Is it easier to give to somebody, Amen. to certain people, yeah. and it's hard to give to others, right? Yeah, all right. We got all the way across the room with that one. So we know what we're talking about. But, but you know, it's, there's principles to children of the kingdom, to the children of God, that it does not say who to give to. It just says give. You know, I, I see the things that God is doing here at Walkerville, and, you know, I try to wrap my mind around it. You know, the, the way people are coming in, the way people are coming to Christ, the lives that are being changed, the strength that is being drawn. I'm like, Lord, what in the world is going on? And as I read, sometimes it just keeps coming back to some of these principles that the children of God are, and y'all are just behaving like the children of God. Y'all know that? Amen. I mean, it's just amazing to be a part of. When children of God act like children of God, he just brings more children in. Amen. So all we got to do is act like it. This is what he's saying. He's saying give, and it will be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, running over. So he'll give us so much that we can't contain. Look at the last part of verse 38 right there. For the middle part, excuse me. It's going to be given back to you a good measure. Press down, shaking together, and running over. What, what would be a good measure? What, what do you say a good measure would be? What, how do we relate this? You know, a, a good measure. You know, I, I, I thought of just one little thing. Y'all have probably many examples. But when I go to a restaurant and I like order a bowl of soup, don't bring me a half full bowl of soup. I won't get good measure of soup. I want it right there to the top of the rim. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. When they bring it to me, I want to see it run down the sides a little bit and get on the platter. I want a good measure when I order something, right? Same with I order some rice or a roast beef or whatever. It is. Give, me, give me my money for it. Amen. I want a good measure. Amen. Okay, so when we give, you know, that's kind of what we expect back sometimes. We give, well, I want at least what I give to somebody back, right? Oh, y'all done quit now. But what about when we receive it like this? Uh, press down. Have you ever got something that's kind of been pressed down? I thought of like two things. Have you ever you ordered something from a uh, takeout from a Chinese restaurant or something in that little old square box? And when you get it home, you know, the, the top of it's kind of humped up a little bit. And you open it up and you stick the spoon in there and rice falls out. Yeah. They got it packed down tight. Or if it's noodles, you know, you can't hardly get the noodles out. You have to break the box to get into it. They got it pressed down. The other thing was, you know, we ordered some some meat from a, from a barbecue place. And a couple of pans of it, big pans like this. And I got one of them out of the truck and I put it in there. And, you know, it was kind of humped up on the top. And you know, most of the time when you get to where you're going, it's sunk down like this. When I got to where we was going, that top pan was full and that bottom pan was full. It was still humped up after riding a few miles. Like, man. And then you got in it with a spoon, you had to get a real spoon. But it was packed down and tied in a break of plastic spoon. Uh, you know what I'm mean? saying? But it was, it was pressed down in there. You know, you couldn't get no more in it. But then, what about running over? Have you ever gotten something paid for something and when you got it, man, this is just running over. It's just really full. I thought of my boys. Not necessarily, yeah, but I thought of my boys. Eating cereal. They had cereal before they come tonight, didn't they? You know, they, they give them a bowl, bowl of cereal. And they'll get the big old box. They have plenty of uh, Cheerios in the box and they'll pour it out in there and they pour it in and it runs out on the table. You know what they do? They kind of pile it up, put it back on top of the bowl, then they mash it down a little bit. And then they got to put the milk in there, though. 
So they poured the milk in there and know what happened? Well, it falls all out again. So then, the next time, they get the bigger bowl, don't we, Judah? <laughs> Judah, he, he'll get the big bowl now. He'll fill it up with, with Cheerios, pack it back down, pour the milk in there, and then he's scraping up off the table again, and sometimes we even get milk on the table too. He just gets a good portion. Pack down. A good measure. Pack down. Running over. That's how I like my stuff, man. Amen. When y'all fix your plate at supper, do you leave any holes and hollers in there? No, sir. Probably not. Me and Mr. Dwayne, dog, because it's piled up, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Yeah. Oh, there ain't no gaps in there. So this is what he's talking about when we're giving. When we're generous, we want to receive back, don't we? But most of the time, we don't want just what we've given. We want a little bit extra, don't we? Mm. Have you ever received extra when you've done that? Or maybe when your heart hasn't been right, but you give anyway. And you got back something you wasn't expecting. Or have we ever given something expecting to get a lot in return and didn't get anything? There's one thing that pop in your mind. Well, I ain't doing that again. I ain't going to give to them no more, are you? Or I ain't doing that thing again. I didn't get what I wanted in return. But Jesus is telling us this. Children of the kingdom aren't really like that because it doesn't matter how somebody responds to us. It just matters, it just matters how we respond to Christ and being in the kingdom. Amen. Amen. When we give, Amen. we get. And we're not just talking about money right here. Look at verse 37. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. And then it says give. And it will be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and it will be poured out into your bosom. Telling us just give. That, that's one of those, those, some of those statements are like standalone sentences that we can come back to. So we could say, we could read it like this. Jesus, back up in verse 20. Jesus, looking at his disciples, said this, forgive. Jesus, looking at his disciples, says, forgive, and you'll be forgiven. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, looking at his disciples, says, release, and it will be released to you. It's like a standalone sentence, isn't it? Yeah. But with that standalone sentence, it kind of catches everything else involved in up above it. But he says, forgive, set it free. Let it go. Dismiss it. It's like a petitioner to whom liberty to depart has been given by a decisive answer. Is purpose. Being set free. So in as being children of God, as we see some of these terms that Jesus uses, those children of the kingdom have been freed, have they not? Mm -hmm. Amen. Have we not been Amen. forgiven? Amen. Amen. Do we have we not experienced the forgiveness of a just judge upon a rightfully earned wage of death of an individual. Yeah. We have earned that, but we have received the forgiveness of God. Give, and it will be given unto you. A good measure, measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. I have received a lot of pressed down, shaken together, running over from forgiveness from Jesus. You have probably experienced from your loved one, Danielle pours out a lot of forgiveness on money. It's pressed down, it's shaking together, it is running over. But it's because she knows Christ that she's able to do it. If she didn't know Jesus, more than likely she'd already be left by now. Does that make sense? Yes. Give and it will be given unto you, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Look at verse 38 again. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. 
pressed down, or a good measure, pressed down, shaken together. And so looking through, you know, this last verse right here, and you know, oftentimes, sometimes you'll, you'll hear that, you'll hear this verse when it's talking about when you're giving. So this seed is talking about money. You sow a dollar, you'll receive ten dollars. You sow ten dollars, you might receive twenty dollars, or thirty dollars, or a hundred dollars. But you sow something, they kind of tie it in with sowing and reaping. But when we're sowing and reaping, there's more, there's more things than just money about sowing and reaping in the kingdom of God than we often think about. Yeah, that's right. Jesus tells tells us this about money: it's the love of money. That's the root of all evil. If that's the root of all evil, why would he pile it on me, somebody that cannot contain what he's willing to give and cannot use it right? He will not do it because that's going to trip me up. This is what he does tell us to do. Exercise some principles of kingdom living in my life, and I won't have to worry about my needs. As in my personal life, as in the life of the church here at Walkerville Baptist Church, as you know, we are have a lot going on here. Looking at this principle, giving and receiving. When we give and, and the heart's right, when we give and the attitude's right, when we give and the purpose is right, when we give and, and you know we're supporting the plan of God, everything's right, He's going to give back. He's going to cause the increase. He's going to give back a good measure, pressed down shaking together and running over. He'll do that in the life of the church. He'll do that in the life of individuals. He's going to do it. So let's look now at the measure. Look in verse 38. You'll be given back a good measure. Press down, shaking together. Look at the bottom part of that. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. For the same measure that you use, or the same measure you measure when we're working with people, when we're, we're talking with people, when we're building our relationships. You know, we talked about judging right up there just a little bit earlier. Have you ever judged somebody by what they look like? It says the same measure is going to be measured back to us. I wonder if that measurement would be pressed down, shaking together, running over. <laughs> Maybe we do something negative. Maybe it's an exponential negative result that we get. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. But if we do something righteous, something good, something holy, it is an exponential increase in something righteous, good, and holy that gets done back to us. I think that's what we're seeing in a lot of our lives now. Because a lot of us here at Walkerville, you're serving the Lord. You're in the kingdom and you're growing in the kingdom. You're learning what who Jesus is. You're learning how to serve in the kingdom. And God is just increasing that Amen. exponentially. Amen. Because you see your family coming. You see your friends coming. You got co-workers talking about it. So this giving that we're talking about, this generosity, it's an attitude of being generous with who we are and what has been given to us a good measure. To, you know, to do this measure, it's going to be something like a tape measure, measure the length of something, or something like a rod that's going to measure the height of something. Or it, it, it's just talking about this, a measurement that, that goes to a limit or a measurement that, to see how, where the limit is. You know, when they were talking about pressed down, shaking together, running over, talking about buying a, a bushel of, of corn or something, and they'd pour corn into a, to a big bowl, and then they would shake it to get all, so the, all the kernels would get down in there close. And then they'd pour a little bit more in there, and then they'd shake a little bit more, and then they'd take both their hands, and they'd, they'd press it down to make sure they, it all got in there. People not like nowadays. You know, we'll shoot air in something, make you think you got a bunk, and you ain't got anything. <laughs> you know, we'll buy, we'll buy a ball of cotton candy, think we got something, you boil it down, it might be a teaspoon full of sugar. <laughs> and that's it. You know, it's all, there's a lot of fluff when we sell stuff, and we want to do something for somebody. We got a lot of fluff in there. It ain't nothing, but that ain't how it was when they were selling. When you want a true and just 
and a righteous scale, you give everybody the money for it. And when it comes from a provider, you give everybody more than enough because you want them to come back. Is that right? Amen. That's right. Yeah. And they, they went to a store and they had some stuff they was checking out. The guy was checking it out. And, and they had a couple of things. It didn't even ring up. And he said, well, you can have it anyway. He puts it in the bag and they go off with it. Then I said, Daddy, you need to go to this store and you need to get this cashier and you load up. Uh, he ain't checking it out right. So, you know, when we get something that's a benefit for, for us, we tell other people about it, don't we? Or if it's a real benefit for us, we're going to go back. Does that make sense? Some of us, because of the love that our family members have been seeing, are drawn them in. Some of us, because of the love that we've been showing to our friends at work, has drawn them in. Drawn them to ask questions. When we measure out that which was done. So let's jump back up real quick. Look at verse 37. But I say to you who hear. Now this idea of generosity is on our minds. This idea of, of being generous. Not just because of what we're going to receive or could receive something pressed down, shaken together, running over. But that's the principle. But we're going to just do what the kingdom wants us to do and the result is left to what is given back to us. Look, but I say to you who hear, those who hear, the disciples, the believers, the followers, true followers of Christ, love your enemies. What do you mean? Love them. How do I love my enemies? Well, you love them like this, you give a good measure of love. Man, that sounds different, doesn't it? But why should I do that? Well, when you do that, you're going to receive it back. A good measure. The same measure that you gave them, you, they're going to receive it back. You're going to receive it back for yourself. So if I just show you a little bit of love, guess what? My enemy's going to show me a little bit of love. If I show my enemy a whole lot of love, pretty soon they're going to show me a whole lot of love. If I'm generous with my love to my enemy, guess what? My enemy's going to be changed. Amen. More than likely. Amen. They are going to be changed. Why? Because my concern is about that enemy and his soul. Then isn't it great to receive back a good measure, pressed, pressed down, shaken together, running over? There's a good measure there. Look, do good to them. Do what is right to them. To those who, who, who do what? Who hate you. Look at the end of verse 37. Do good to those who hate you. Well, I can do good a little bit. But a generous person in the, belief, in the kingdom of God is going to be more. Going to go an extra step. They're going to go at the second mile. Yeah. They're not going to limit that generosity that I normally would. Because I'm always focused on this. What are they going to give me back? When people of the kingdom are not focused on what unbelievers can give back to them because they don't need what unbelievers have because they have the king that has everything. And he, the king says he will take care of his children so we can love our enemies. We can do good to those who hate us. We can bless those that curse us and pray for those who spitefully use us. And for the one that insults us in verse 29. But look at verse 32. We've got to jump down there real quick. But if you love those who love you, what credit is that for you? So when you read down through there, you're going to hear some of those, those things I just told you. The prince, two principles, the king, those in the kingdom. One, they're generous. Second one, they're generous to the unbelievers, those that can't do anything for them. Does that make sense? Yeah. But that unbeliever's mean to me. That unbeliever says bad things about me. That unbeliever hates me. So what? He's supposed to. <laughs> Doesn't he? If I'm living like Christ, they're going to hate us. Because Jesus said, my, my followers will be hated because they hated me. Then he turns around and tells us to do this, be generous to them. Be generous with what? Love. I don't think he's telling us to give them everything they want, but he's telling us to give them love. 
Well, what else could it be? Could he be talking about that he wants us to do? Let's look at verse thirty-five. He says it again: Love your enemies, do good, and lend, hoping that, hoping for nothing in return. You don't want anything in return for it. For your reward will be great, and you'll be called sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the unthankful and evil. Therefore, look at verse 36. Be merciful. How generous are we with mercy? How generous are we? Would you call yourself a merciful person? And I think with mercy right there, I think, buddy thinks, this is something, buddy. I have a hard time separating mercy and grace. If I'm going to be merciful to somebody, that, that's not just really good enough to be merciful for them. i got to be gracious also. I'm not going to give them what they deserve, but I might give them something they don't deserve. They may deserve. They may deserve a knuckle sandwich. Maybe I get Brandon to cook them a cake because I can't cook. Get Jasper to cook them a pound cake. He's good at that. But being gracious to somebody. So how's my generosity with graciousness? How's my generosity with mercy? Remember, give, and it will be given back to you. A good measure. Pressed down, shaken together. I like love. I like mercy and I like grace. Amen. The more I'm willing to give, the more I get. So if I'm if I'm loving to an enemy, if I'm merciful to my enemy, if I'm gracious to my enemy, guess what? The goal idea is for him to do the same back to me. And the more I do it, it's like keeping coals of fire up on his head for his sins won't burn. Does that make sense? I think this is what we're seeing a lot of us in here right now. This day, you, you want to know why the baptism is full like it is? You don't want to know why the church is full like it is? Why Sunday school is doing good and all these different ministries? God is multiplying. God is multiplying. He's faithful to his word in him. When, we ex when kingdom people exercise kingdom principles, you have a kingdom product. And that is God keeping multiplying his people. Does that make sense? Give. And it will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will pour out into our laps more than we can contain. Does that make sense? Yeah. Pretty simple message, isn't it? Yeah. Generosity, the principle of the kingdom of God. And as we get ready to close tonight, we would thank y'all for your generosity. And as we are exercising this generosity in our lives, we can expect to see an increase as it works out in each of our lives. As we're loving our enemies, as we're loving our family, as we're loving the ones that we work with, we can expect to see pretty soon an increase coming. Press down, shaking together, and running over for the glory of the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this day. God, as you are so generous to us. God, as I need to be more generous. God, Lord, we've seen a great example of generous love, haven't we? Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We have seen so much love and mercy and grace in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God, we have seen so much love and mercy and grace and caring as you raised Jesus from the dead. He gives us everlasting life. 
God, we thank you for the example of generosity that we see. God, thank you for these men and women and young boys and girls that are showing that generosity. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.